Much indeed. Meanwhile, Tom and Vicky, uh, we're seeing share prices and AstraZeneca down more than 13% this morning. I think ethically you have to ask questions about it too. I mean, it's largely rooted in tax minimalisation, isn't it, that the taxes payable here would be lower than in the US. And then also asking the question about job losses. I mean, talking about people in the UK who have jobs that may not. I mean, are they going to keep you people's jobs in the UK Who's or Who's sitting in on the that US? board will care. They will see the cash coming their way and they're going to sell out. And that's what I'd like to know exactly how much it is worth. If all those mm. billions is not enough, how much is enough? Uh, yeah. Really, how much is enough? Yeah. Yeah. The key is that they've got all these drug, drug cancer drugs in the pipeline, which right, is what they right. want to get their yeah. hands on. So they're already sort of experts, AstraZeneca, in I think it's asthma drugs and, and diabetic drugs. Mm -hmm. But it's these cancer drugs that aren't on the market yet that Pfizer are so desperate. So that's why they're saying it's not enough money, because they know what they've but got. But again, it's people are arguing valuable. about medicines that's going to heal people and save people's lives. They're arguing about yeah. money when it yeah. comes to that. What sort of a price you yeah. put on that? Ethically, people that's quite questionable, quite isn't, wrong, it? isn't it? OK. Um, now we'll talk about um, the prison authorities being under uh, pressure yet again. Another convicted killer, uh, Arnold Pickering. Um, he absconded after being on day release. I mean, this man is a murderer. He is an armed robber as well. Uh, the Justice Secretary this morning, I spoke to him, Chris Grayland. This is what he had to say. I don't mind the principle of somebody going out to do a day's work to get them back into the employment habit in preparation for release in a few weeks or a few months' time. But the idea that we'd let serious criminals go and walk around town all day is simply unacceptable, and that is something we're putting a stop to. OK, so what do we think about the whole idea of open how, prisons and who gets in? How did that happen in the first place? Because Why that's that all part happen? of the system. That's all part of rehabilitating yeah, which is these a good guys. Thing, isn't it? You know. I understand that, Emma, but how have they decided to let somebody like that man out into the public? Say he would have committed the same crime again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then yeah. what happened? And he'd Why can't we three stop three more it times now? previously, hadn't he? This you know. was his fourth time doing a runner, so you'd think he would have probably had three strikes and you're out, I would have thought. But this is incredible. This is what's called temporary release license, right? So these two guys, both robbers, one of them a murderer, they can toot light off the prison. They can say, bye, we'll go down to the shops on a Saturday mm. and spend all day out and then come back. I think that's really weird. It's not even it's kind of logical rehabilitation, is it? I thought they would be sent out to actually do specific things, possibly to get skills or look at job exactly. opportunities, I'm totally look at housing opportunities. I'm totally in agreement with letting prisoners out and rehabilitating them, but you've got to assess the individual and he's obviously and the crime. a threat to the public because we're being told not to approach him if anyone sees exactly. him and yet he's a he's a prisoner yeah. that's in a category c yeah it's actually quite frightening it's seeing him over your shoulder yeah. <laughs> mm. well i hope you don't see him over yeah. your shoulder please god uh, no. meanwhile this whole situation of the um, the four missing british sailors um the north atlantic uh their yacht um has capsized they've been missing from friday mm. the last we heard was when they radioed on friday to say they were taking on water and uh, they found an upturned hull when they searched, but search and rescue put in about 48 hours of work and then said there was nothing more they could do. So obviously there's lots of families who are who desperate for yeah. them to resume the search. Those, I mean, who makes those decisions? I mean, how can you make that well, decision? Mm -hmm. if, well, if the foreign office is now getting involved. They're trying to put uh, pressure on the American Coast Guard to keep up uh, about this and they're saying that mm. they uh, they want to pursue every avenue that they can with all of this and uh, we're now going to hear from uh, an aunt of one of those sailors uh, of the skipper actually of the boat and this is uh, Georgie Bridge. We are very surprised that the search has been called off um, or suspended um, I think you know we feel it's quite a short period of time for that to have happened. Um, we still believe that Andy is alive um, and that you know there is hope that he could be found. Awful, awful, awful how anybody survives. I mean, I, I have a fascination for war movies that are about you know ships that go down. Robert Redford has got a film out at the moment where he um, is, is has capsized in the yacht that that he's sailing on. And you know, to beat the elements like that, to try and survive, um, temperatures must be so low as mm. well. I mean, Two you... days. I mean, are they equipped for it though? If they're saying they're equipped for it, they're trained for that sort of thing. I mean, look, you've got military guys, special special ops guys that can do things that are you unimaginable to what other people could do. So these guys are equi equipped and trained yeah. to survive well, more than forty eight hours. Well, yeah. most, most people couldn't survive makes, half an hour those, in, yeah. in temperatures like that. So it's asking, it's asking an awful yeah. lot. What have you got to say about Nigel Farage and what's he been saying about um, things after that interview last week? So he got himself into trouble on LBC. James O'Brien followed a line of questioning uh, about the fact that Farage has got a wife who is German, who speaks German as well as English, and his children are bilingual, and uh, really pushed uh, Farage on his nasty 
kind of immigration uh, repertoire about you know the quality of people and that Romanians were, were not as great as Germans. I mean, he actually said that in the interview that Romanians were kind of you know you know the difference between a Romanian immigrant and a German immigrant, which is incredibly offensive. He's now backpedalling, saying he was tired, and uh, in his usual charming way, which probably will win back lots of support, which frustrates me. Um, he's saying that he actually just made a mistake. <laughs> well, it may frustrate you, and there's a, people out there have a bit of a sort of conspiracy theory in all of this. They think all the media is against Farage, and there's some sort of pact between mm -hmm. uh, the, the main political parties and a, a lot of uh, publications and, and television stations and things out there. He still has a lot of support, and mm -hmm. he seems to speak in a language that, that people find different and are attracted to, uh, in a way, Tamar. I mean, my parents were... Immigrants, you know what? What gives anybody to write? Were your parents from Turkey? Was yeah, Turkish Cypriots, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, what gives anybody to write to differentiate between a Greek Cypriot or a Turkish Cypriot? Exactly. Just because, I mean, there was a scenario in the '73 they they were at war, but for us as people, we are Cypriots. Whether you're Greek or you're mm -hmm. Turkish, we we see ourselves as Cypriots. It's just the rest of the world that sees us different. And if one man's saying something different, who's asking him the question? Ask, who's asking him the question? Why ask the question? If the man wants to be honest, I mean, that's probably why he's got to be. If he's got honest and he wants to put his view across, then he puts his view across, whether it's yes. right or wrong. Do you know what, Tracy? That, uh, Vicky, sorry, that's a very good point. Last week, I think, there was a survey, Isabel, wasn't there? And they were saying it wasn't immigration people said they were voting for UKIP uh, for. It was trust. They say they trusted them more, trusted mm. them more, what they said. As opposed to other politicians, that could be because of his manner and the fact that he's actually said in this interview, sometimes I do stupid stuff. Nobody else really takes responsibility in that way. Uh -huh. He's he's very endearing, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. I just hate is his he that important, yeah. really? I mean, is he that important? Yeah, you know, what he says. Um... Now, talking about stupid stuff or other stuff, um, mm -hmm. we now have a story about a brain scanner, right? Uh, oh, an yeah, ordinary brain brilliant. scanner. This one, this one reads. <laughs> <really brilliant. laughs> this is that may be a good thing, it may be a bad thing. Some people can be very disturbed by their dreams. I am a dreamer. I I dream. Quite a lot. Is it right? Do you dream quite a lot? Yeah, yeah. I'm a big dreamer. Yeah. And like some things I dream. <laughs> yeah. Really don't want to think about. Oh, you don't. Are you a dreamer, Vicky? Uh, uh, no, I wish I was. I feel really? somewhat left out. I th Do you I think sleep I think... soundly at night? Um, more or less. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah, takes me a while to drop off, but once I'm asleep, I don't oh, tend no. to dream. Isabel? I'm a dreamer. Yeah. yeah. A dream a mind going yeah, all the time. Really. Which I don't think I have proper deep sleep. I'm sort of always in that REM dream. Because we're worried about sleeping in. What's the point of it? What is the point of this? What is the point of it? It's come out of the university. Of California, obviously, you know uh -huh. all the cool things come out of California there. dreaming. Um, exactly, yeah. exactly, and it's uh, it's uh, something that neuroscientists have invented that will scan the brain during your sleep and actually create images of facial recognition. So you may not want this performed on you if you're dreaming Isabel about people that you shouldn't be. has one of those guilty-looking faces. That's very interesting. <laughs> but they're saying, they're, they're saying there's actually a positive use for it that it could actually be used in terms of um, uh, identifying criminals. So victims could be scanned in case they are subconsciously remembering the face of their, you know, attacker or someone who committed a crime, but for most of us, I think uh, we'd rather people didn't know the faces of people we're dreaming about. Yeah. <laughs> or what they're dreaming about. Exactly. I dream of being Jack Bauer and saving yes. the world. Yeah. Uh, Tamar is involved in filming 24 at the moment. So the thing is, although we're seeing it on Sky, yeah. um, it's not completed yet. You're no. going to be filming for a number of weeks or months. I think they finish around June. Right? Yeah, I think they finish around June. So it's kind of going... And uh, the way they're shooting it, it's very sort of up in the air, you know, it's all last minute sort of thing. And I don't think that's anything to do with the production or how it's been. I just think that they're working it out as they go along, which is kind of cool. But yeah, Well, no, it's a great watch. Enjoying your role in it, my friend. Thank Lovely you. seeing you. Yeah, Thanks for thank taking you time off your filming Pleasure. to be Thanks here today. Me. As Tamar Hassan, uh, Vicky Beeching, thank you very much indeed for your take on today's news stories. Now, up next, we've got another actor. We've got a bit